Hello everyone, my name is Jack from WePC and welcome to my Cyberpunk Optimization Guide. So in this video, we're going to go through every significant setting within Cyberpunk 2077 and look at how they impact performance and how they affect visual fidelity. I do want to mention, in the spirit of keeping this video a little bit shorter than usual and in a manageable time, I don't go into the details of what the settings do in this video. I do highly recommend you check out our Resident Evil 7 benchmark where I do go into much more details about the settings and what they do in game. Now I know we're a little late to the party but we wanted to have a crack at this after all the updates had fixed some of the bigger issues. Our aim is to find a balance between performance and visuals, squeezing the most frames we can whilst maintaining a great visual experience. So I guess we'd better get started. First up then is FOV. FOV for me made very little difference in any setting. This was surprising as I figured that with more pixels on the screen the GPU would have a harder time pushing out each frame. Apparently not. There's no difference. Not even in the more intense fight scenes did I see a shift in average FPS, but as you can see the results are basically the same across 70, 85 and 100 FOV. This setting is entirely up to you, entirely what you want. We're next going to group these five settings together. These settings only have an effect on the overall look and feel of the game and are entirely optional effects. These do not affect performance whatsoever, at least not in my testing. You can choose to enable or disable any of these options you either like or don't like, purely personal preference. Next, onto contact shadows. As you can see, contact shadow is a setting that really adds a lot to the image overall. The woman on the left with the contact shadows turned on looks far more realistically lit as if actually existing in a globally illuminated space, whereas the woman on the right with the contact shadows turned off looks like she's badly photoshopped into the scene, with vastly different lighting. I personally hate when lighting doesn't match up, it can really be immersion breaking so for that reason with only a 1fps average drop, I'm 100% for your own immersion sake going to recommend you keep this setting enabled. So next up on the list is improved facial lighting geometry. This setting is said to improve the quality of the light filtering on facial features. I thought this setting was broken at first because I didn't at all see a difference until I got into the conversations with people in dimly lit areas. Here the setting can be seen making very small improvements on the visual fidelity of this character's face with the eyes being darker and the areas around the mouth also receiving some more shadow too. This setting only seems to be active in cutscenes and conversations and for that reason doesn't really impact FPS. I didn't drop one in this scene here. The results may vary in cutscenes of multiple people and I again did not observe a difference so for this reason due to the none at all or very little penalty I'd say keep this setting on. Next up on the list is Anisia dropping and again try as I might I can't see a visual difference no matter what setting this is on whether this is 1x or 16x. Even in a faster pace, more demanding sections of the game, it yields similar results. And for that reason, to keep in the spirits of giving the game the best chance at looking pretty, I'm going to say for now, keep it on 16x. Okay, time to look at local shadow mesh quality. I can see some quality differences here, but having said that, all of the shadows, no matter what presets, seem to be very similar to one another, and the FPS hit is almost non-existent, with a 1 FPS loss from high to low. I promise this consistent 1 FPS hits won't last for too much longer. Local shadow quality is up next with a massive 0% difference in this specific scene. I didn't see any significant performance hit while cycling through these three settings. High is definitely the option here as even on the highest settings shadow can be questionable at best and due to the fact you're not sacrificing any FPS this is a no brainer. So next up then we have cascaded shadows range from low to high. This setting governs the amount of shadows cast by objects in the game that are dynamically affected by global illumination. So the detail or amount of shadows cast by objects increase the higher you go. And as you can see here, far few shadows are cast by objects on the right with the low setting and the shadows are very aliased and pixelated. Compared to high that has much more detail in shadow, note the lampposts and smaller objects alike now being cast with only a minimal decrease in FPS, around 3% over low. So for this reason, I'll say leave it on high. Up next is Cascaded Shadows Resolution. This setting determines the resolution of cascaded shadows based on your native resolution. 
You can see the lower quality resolution setting displays very blocky and alias shadows, whereas high and medium look to be about the same to me. Not a huge lot in quality, but a massive gain in performance. I definitely say that for this setting, you should keep it on medium. Next on the list is distance shadows resolution. This is the same premise as cascaded shadows, only it's the distant static shadow map as opposed to the dynamic shadow map. Static meaning unchanged or updated far less than real time cascaded shadows, as you can see then. Not a massive difference in quality or performance with high only dropping around 1fps from low. And how most of your time spent in Cyberpunk 2077 will be navigating a big city, you'll only ever get a few opportunities to catch a glimpse of the faraway distant shadow maps unobstructed. So in my opinion, you'll barely notice if you really want that extra 1fps, put it on low, but for the sake of 1fps, just leave it on high. Volumetric Fog then is up next. Volumetric Fog may make appearances in places you may not expect, for example here in the desert. Volumetric fog is present here, governing the dust particles and some background hazing. You can tell there's fog even here by the FPS increase turning down from Ultra provides. Honestly, there's not a noticeable difference in fog quality when going from Ultra to Medium, but high being the middle in this case offers very little visual difference over Ultra and provides a good 8% FPS increase. However, in this case, there might not be a difference, but in areas of heavy fog, there is some quality improvements to be had by going Ultra. So for that reason, I'd say Ultra. Next is volumetric clouds quality. Volumetric clouds are literally the clouds in the sky, but as you know, adding volume to something or filling something up adds dimension and realism to them. Much like a 2D object's realism improves when it's made 3D. Slight tangent there. We can see that high, obviously being the highest quality, yields as 108 FPS or a 6% decrease over medium. That's sitting at 116. Again, a 2%-ish decrease over low that's giving us 118 FPS. I'd say medium for this because it's a nice middle ground and the cloud quality isn't bad at all and there's definitely some improvements to be had with the high setting, but that's what it's there for. Up next is dynamic decals. Dynamic decals are things like bullet holes, bloodstains, tire marks, anything that adds an extra texture onto the surface through an interaction is usually a dynamic decal. Well, after absolutely peppering the wall there with bullet holes, I was surprised to see that the setting actually makes a 1fps difference. A difference is a difference. These settings affect the maximum amount of dynamic decals allowed on screen at one time, and additionally how long they are rendered for. So I'd say just put it on ultra. Next up then is screen space reflections. The screen space reflection quality setting dictates the quality of reflections in game and corresponds to improved image sharpness, detail and smoothness. In reflection holes like windows and puddles, this is usually a pretty costly setting and obviously the more you crank it up, the worse the FPS loss will be. As you can see, low is the better option here in terms of FPS, but the reflections are very undefined and blurry, whereas in contrast, high's reflections are pretty crisp and sharp. I'm going to say high here. The reflections look great compared to low and it's only a 1% decrease from medium for a little more than 1% bump in image quality. Interestingly enough, there's another setting within Cyberpunk, Psycho. Here you can see just in this scene alone, we lose a good 20% of our FPS just here and the settings look no greater than Ultra. So definitely if you're going for optimization, it's a good general rule to avoid Psycho settings. Next up is subsurface scattering quality. This setting is simulating a real life effect called subsurface light transfer and occurs when light enters a translucent object at one point, scatters within the object and leads to another point. You can see this in real life by holding your fingers up to a light and that red glow you see around your fingers is subsurface light transfer. And despite my best efforts, I could not find an instance where the quality or FPS was affected by changing these settings. I'd say leave this one on high since currently there's no penalty for doing so. Ambient occlusion takes the stage next. Screen space ambient occlusion produces natural shadows in areas where regular shadow max lack precision and incoming light is blocked by nearby environmental geometry, e.g. inside narrow gaps and corners. Setting on a higher quality preset will increase sampling rate and improve ambient occlusion but use more GPU power. So let's take a look at performance then. Here at high, we have an 86 FPS average, but low is a 3% difference. So for this one, I recommend the low setting as there's scarcely a visual difference at all between the three. Color precision is next up on the list. 
And all this setting really does is prevent color banding. When there's lots going on in the screen space, there's loads of color in Cyberpunk 2077, especially at night in Night City. But having said that, you can gain around 3 FPS when switching from high to medium with pretty much no impact at all on visuals that I ever saw. This setting is basically a higher FPS button. Mirror quality is a simple one and a simple concept. This setting increases the resolution of mirror reflections when actively looking in mirrors. There's very few instances you require to look into mirrors in Cyberpunk and it's not going to affect FPS outside of the mirror. However, it does make a huge difference in FPS while in the mirror. But as I said, it's very situational and I'd say stick it on high for the best experience looking in the mirrors as to not break immersion. LOD is next then. And although LOD would suggest that the game would lower the amount of polygons used to make models at specific distances per setting, I didn't see much of a difference at all. The objects in both near and far distance seem the same or very similar quality to me. And there's very little FPS difference. We're talking about 2 FPS across the board. In fact, in a twist of events, I'd say high looks slightly worse when zoomed in a thousand percent, but that might just be me. I'd definitely say keep this setting on high. Next up, we've hit ray tracing territory. And as you can see, RT has a massive performance hit over off, obviously providing more accurate real-time reflections over the static SSR map. Reflections are a massive part of Cyberpunk's aesthetic within themselves. I do recommend you have all ray tracing features off, but I will summarize my optimized ray tracing experience at the end of the ray tracing segment. So next, ray trace shadows. This option creates beautiful and accurate shadows based directly off the global illumination map. Ray tracing here does a very good job of depicting accurate shadows within the game, but as you can see, definitely comes at a cost. We're talking 25% hit in FPS by enabling this feature, and to be honest, although I feel like Cyberpunk shadows can be lacking at times, I do feel that a 25% FPS penalty is too harsh a penalty to justify enabling this option. Ray trace light then. And ray trace light provides real-time accurate light dispersion and emission with light cast on things like walls and the glow of neon signs being clean and true to life. Again with this being a ray tracing feature and us being on a last gen GPU to represent the market's lack of 30 series GPUs, we do take an obvious hit here. 30% decrease in FPS from medium to psycho, 22% of that being from high to psycho, I never recommend Psycho because it looks literally no different from High most of the time. Psycho does add an additional global illumination pass on top of the game's default one that adds minute scattering and reflection details but I hardly ever see it in game. And it makes such a little difference to gameplay and visuals that I don't think it's worth the massive hit in FPS. Throwing away 22% of your FPS for almost nothing visually is definitely not in the spirit of optimization. To summarise ray tracing then, I recommend if you must have ray tracing enabled that you set ray tracing reflections to on, ray trace shadows to off and ray trace lighting to medium. This is a very heavy couple of settings to enable but if you have around 30 to 40 fps over your target to spare I'd say enabling them would positively impact your experience visually but if you don't however it may not be the end of the world because up next is DLSS. DLSS takes your game resolution down a notch depending on the setting you've set and then uses AI to upscale it to whatever resolution you're trying to play at. And honestly it does a very good job. Even on the 2080 Super here with DLSS 1.0 it still makes a huge difference. If you're lucky enough to have a 30 series GPU, you have DLSS 2.0 which is a much better iteration of DLSS. Enough on that now. As I mentioned before, if you want the mechanics of game settings, go check out our Resident Evil video. Now onto DLSS, and this thing really packs a punch. Here in the scene we have DLSS off and you can see the average FPS is about 104 FPS. So now let's get all the DLSS settings going and get an idea of how they affect FPS. Okay, there's a lot to decipher here, so let's break it down. We have from left to right ultra performance coming in at 162 fps average with a noticeably blurry and unpleasant image to look at. Staring at this DLSS setting for too long makes me feel like I need to rub my eyes. The next setting is performance, with a slight improvement in the visual quality due to less drastic downscale in internal resolution. Sitting at a 160 fps average, about a 1.2% decrease. Next we have balanced. 
A nice middle ground as the name suggests with an average look and feel to the game but it definitely isn't native and you can still see the degradation in quality over native but still coming in at a respectable 147 fps and 9% decrease over ultra performance. And finally we have quality. Quality aims to well give you the best quality image it can whilst trying its best to squeeze as much FPS out of the game as possible. And I'm here to tell you that it does indeed do a very good job. Not only do we get 130 FPS average, and that's an 18% loss over ultra performance, but the image quality is barely changed to my eye. There's some difference in the distance, and I can see some areas look a tad more aliased or muddy than normal, but I honestly did not notice too much. The performance that DLSS gives could be the difference between ray tracing on or off and that's a win in my book. So that's about every setting that affects FPS in a significant way, let's go over my optimised settings. Contact shadows on, improved facial lighting geometry on, local shadow mesh quality high, local shadow quality high, cascaded shadows range high, cascaded shadows resolution medium, Distance shadow resolution, high, volumetric fog resolution, ultra, volumetric cloud quality, medium, max dynamic decals, ultra, screen space reflections quality, high, subsurface scattering quality, high, ambient occlusion, low, colour precision, medium, mirror quality, high, level of detail, high, and my recommended ray tracing settings are, ray trace reflections, on, ray trace shadows, off, ray trace lighting, medium, and of course, finally, the LSS you want on ultra. So yeah, that's it. That covers it. Thank you ever so much for sticking around, guys. This one was going to be long, so I tried to shorten it down a bit. If you want to know in more detail what some of these settings are and or do, go check out our recent optimization guide video. That is all the information you need. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe if you want to see videos similar to this one. And if you want to catch more content from us, that'd be grand. This has been Jack from WePC, and I'll see you in the next one.